All right, good evening. Glad you are here for Wednesday night recharge. On Wednesday nights, we've been walking through uh, different demands that Jesus gives uh, to the world and to his followers. And two weeks ago, we talked about uh, the fear of the Lord and the need for us to fear Lord and his holiness and his magnificence. And in fact, Jesus commands that of us. Um, But then last week, we looked at um, the opposite of that. And that is that Jesus does not want his followers to be filled with a fear or an anxiety. Um, And specifically, last week we looked at for the provision of life, that that Christians are called to, uh, commanded to, um, to live opposite the world. And, and where the world is always so worried about uh, possessions and provision and all of that, that Christians, like you have your heavenly father and, and knowing and trusting him rises above all of those circumstances. So in a similar fashion to last week, and I think there were seven uh, markers that Jesus gave for why we are to rise above that. So in a similar vein to last week, uh, this week we're going to look at Jesus again commands us not to be anxious or fearful, but now specifically in regard to the threats of men. Do not be fearful of what man can do to you. Uh, listen, uh, Much of what, uh, everything I'm going to read tonight is in Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to read 18 and 19 first. Jesus says, "And, and you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when you are handed over, do not worry about, about what you are to say, for it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. And then if we skip down into verse 24, guys, a disciple is not above his teacher nor slave his master. It is enough for the disciple that he would become like his teacher and a slave like his master. Now, if they have called the head of the house Beelzebub, well, then how much more will they malign the members of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light, and what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim it upon the rooftops. Do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet not not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Easy for me. (laughs) So do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. All right, so Jesus commands us here actually three times through this passage to be courageous. Threefold, do not fear man. Do not fear what they can do to you, okay? Instead, there is a command to be courageous. And and that courage that is called for is a courage to speak plainly, okay? Okay? Look at verse 27. It says, what I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim it from the housetops. Okay? In other words, so see the picture, right? And that is, you know Jesus. And you have his word and you have his Holy Spirit. And the truth that he speaks to you, Christian that you understand him whispering to you, you and I are to proclaim that truth in the open. So this is both a call to proclaim the gospel and that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through him. And simultaneously, it is a call to proclaim his teachings and his truths, not to get into uh, uh, silly arguments over words here and there, but solid 
gospel truths that our culture will constantly press against, this is a call. Speak those truths out loud with courage and boldness. And Jesus goes on to give us five reasons for why we should do that. Five reasons. So number one, first he says, um, if you look at verse 25, if they call the head of the household Beelzebub, well then how much more will they malign the members of his household? Okay? In other words, Jesus is saying, For you and I to be maligned, this should not be some unexpected, random, meaningless experience that happens to you. Rather, it is a sign that you belong to him, right? That you belong to him. Because when we are maligned for speaking his truth, then we are just being associated with him. And, and if the world attacked him, him, then the world will similarly attack us. Number two, the second reason that he gives. Be courageous to, be, to, to speak his truth plainly, because verse 26, therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. In other words, look to the end. Because in the end, truth will triumph. God's truth will be vindicated in the end. Okay? So it will be rejected now. The truths of Jesus will be rejected now. It will be called demonic. It will be squished and cast out and buried. Um, it will, the world will pretend that Jesus did not speak that way. The world will call you foolish and a bigot and every other thing. But in the end, Jesus says, take heart. In the end, everything will be brought to light and exposed according to him. So take courage in that. Reason number three, that you and I can be courageous and speak the truth plainly. Look at verse 28. He says, do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In other words, the reason you and I are supposed to have courage is because the absolute worst thing that could ever happen to you is that they kill your body but they can't touch the soul. The soul is eternal. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I want you to think about our brothers and sisters. Listen, you and I have it great in the United States of America where the worst sort of persecution that's honestly gonna happen to us today is that we will be ridiculed. But it was just a couple weeks ago, we had our dear sister from India who was here Right? And did she not articulate the pastors who are being beaten, who've, who've lost their lives, the genuine physical harm and persecution that comes against our brothers and sisters around the world right now. And Jesus is saying to them, right, isn't there a tendency in those situations to shrink back? To not tell the truth, do not say that Jesus is the only way. And Jesus here, he says, listen, you be courageous. Why? Because the worst that they can do is to take your body. But listen, they cannot touch the soul. And you have eternity. And it cannot get any worse than that. And your heavenly Father is with you. Reason number four, that you and I are called to be courageous and speak Jesus' truth plainly. Verse 30, because the very hairs on your head are all numbered. I made the joke, easier for me than for others, right? But listen, what is Jesus saying by this? Certainly in situations where there is pressure from the culture to shrink back, when when the fear of man looks really, really big, there is a 
tendency in all of us to think that God is not close, that God is far away. The fear of man looks big and God looks small. You know what Jesus says here? He said, God is close. In fact, he's so close that he can decipher every hair on your head. That's how close he is, okay? He is interested. He cares. He is near. Even if you don't feel like it in that moment. And then reason number five, you and I are called to be courageous and speak his truth plainly. What we hear whispered, speak it boldly in the public square Verse 29, he says, are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. In other words, beloved, nothing can happen to you or against you that is not ultimately a part of the father's will for him to allow. He is not the one doing the persecution, but hear me, he is sovereign over it still. He is sovereign over it still. So Jesus says, listen, a sparrow falls to the ground and it is all according to the will of God the Father. So how much more in your life does God know? Does God not say this one is mine? I take ownership of him. I call him my own. Do you dare think that there is anything that can come against you that he has not already promised to use it for your good and for the glory of his kingdom? Even if it's hard, even if you don't like it, in the end, nothing can happen to you that God does not promise to redeem for his kingdom work. So Jesus lists these five things, right? And he says, whatever you hear me say, you must have boldness and courage to speak it to the culture plainly and to understand you are being associated with me. I am close, okay? I am near, even if it doesn't feel like it, and, and I am working all things out for your good, for my kingdom, and one day, everything will come to light. It will be shown, and beloved, you will be rewarded. You will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, I pray this evening knowing that we live in a culture that absolutely wants to squash the voice of Jesus and his truth for culture's truth. And Father, that can make us so fearful and so anxious. But Jesus, you have called us to be courageous, and to not be fearful, but to stand on your truth and to understand that you have promises and you give us courage. So help us to not be anxious and to fear man. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, God bless you guys.